All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to understand where things lay on your theme. That is the main page. Okay, so we're going to skip pages. Like I said, pages doesn't mean page like the main page. It means the section of the main page that is the content section. Okay, so when we talk about pages, we talk about the part which has the sidebar and the writing next to it, complete with images, videos, clickable links until that section ends and we're into a whole new section, right? Those are new sections, okay? So I'm gonna talk about that differently than the theme, okay? We're gonna look at the theme option settings and the theme typography uh, files first. That's what we're gonna look at so we can understand the layout of our front page. And then we'll go on into a piece of that, which is pages, right? All the stuff that deals with pages. Underneath the page, of course, we have our pre-footer and then our footer, okay? So that's just standard lingo. This is like the header bar up here. Uh, although this one isn't the header bar, this is the nav bar, the navigation bar. Here's the header bar, top bar, sometimes called top bar. Okay, so where are those things? If you wanted to start to make changes to your um, theme, right? You wanted to do something, change the image, change the wording, where do you find it? Okay, so we're gonna go to what's called global settings. This is kind of the top level of your website here, global settings. And it's got sections to it. General settings, theme settings, and theme style and typography. Normally, you're just going to use these three here. You're normally not going to get into this. This is much more advanced stuff, um, which isn't terribly hard to learn, but we'll learn this stuff later. It's good right now just to stick with this. Now, when you talk about selecting subdomains, main domain, everything else, that is, um, again, it gets kind of uh, complicated too. So we'll just leave it alone for now, okay? Just understand these three because this is 99% of the time what you're gonna wind up doing in your site. So first one, the general settings is blue. <laughs> and so what is that all about? Okay, this part here you can skip, okay? this We never wound up using this. We started to and we might one day, but we just don't. And all this stuff about importing variables from Excel uh, has a much more limited fu uh, function than it used to have, okay? Variables from Excel means this. We used to keep a file that had variables on it. So when you went from page to page to page, the wording would fill in differently. So we'll get to that. But for right now, you're just making your main page. So we'll just deal with it that way. Okay, what would your admin email normally be? It would be your email, bob at gmail.com. Admin email means like if you forgot your password, okay? If you tried to sign in and you uh, lost your password, then this is where the recovery password gets sent. That's why it's called the admin email, okay? Website title is uh, Dave <laughs> Does Concrete, okay? Now there's a website title, uh, there's the URL itself, uh, however you want to do it is up to you. So just uh, do it and kind of see what that affects. And then you'll understand if you want to make changes to it. Okay. Um, I could even call it Dave Does Concrete Inc. <laughs> that way we can see better where these things pop up. Okay. This is very generic stuff here on the general settings. It is admin email, website title, favicon icon. Um, pretty much anywhere that you can get an image, you can double click to grab it, or you can hit the browse here, but it's, it's really doing the same thing. And then you'll look for where your uh, logo file is, like a logo here, logo there. It should be there. And so I'm going to double click it. There, see how it added the uh, favicon link? Favicon's for the tiny little icon in the top corner of the website right up here, right? So that should change after I save the page and refresh these. Okay, the website logo uh, is usually bigger. It's on the page itself, right? Uh, sometimes the favicon and um, the website logo, you just grab the same thing, because you can. Uh, it'll do a real tiny one for the top and then a bigger one for the uh, actual website, right? So that's just the way it is. Uh, otherwise, you'd have an actual 
uh, favico icon, which would end in .ico. <laughs> but okay, and we'll talk about the, adding images to that is drag and drop easy, by the way, from your desktop into that pane. Matter of fact, I guess I'll get that out of the way now because that'll just help you see it. So let me pull, I'm trying to pull this page to the side. Let me uh, copy an image just because. I'll just put it here. Paste. And then let me do it with another one. Copy. Paste. Where'd they go? <laughs> Aha. Uh, way over there. Okay, so my point is this. You can have a bunch of images, like a whole folder of images. You know how to highlight the whole thing, right? Just do this line thing and drag across. There you go. They're both check marked. So what can I do? Double click anywhere in any of these, right? And I bring this thing up. And I decide where I want to put my images. Do I want to stick them in this folder maybe? I could even create subfolders, right? Uh, Dave does concrete, you know, or maybe lowercase, okay? And it'll give me a subfolder and I could put the images in there. And if I do that, boom, boom, they're up. They're there. If I hover over them, I can see details. If I right click, I can resize them and create a copy, right? So I can say, take this image and make a smaller version of it. Something like half the size, 250, okay? See how it auto fills the, the corresponding height for me to keep the aspect ratio the same? If I don't want that to happen, I can turn off the lock. And then that way I could really make this whatever I want. But I'm gonna get a really strange stretched image, which in this case I don't want. So I'm gonna just lock the lock again and it'll fix that, okay? Now I wanna create a new image. By the way, these are common things. So you can do this sort of thing. Okay, I haven't tested it, but it should work. And come up with what you wanted to say about this. Dave dash avatar dash small, you know? Okay, there you go, it did it, all right? So it created the different sizes of that image for me. Uh, and yeah, they're copied, I can rename them. If I wanna rename them, I can, okay? That way I can get the name just the way I want. Okay, so you see what's going on there. Now, let's say I want to take some of these or all of these and put them somewhere else. Here's the cool thing. I'm going to highlight, well, highlight, I'm going to uh, control click a couple of these. You know, you can control click as many on and off as you want. Oh, except I might just throw it off at this point. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's funny. Let me get back to my logo first. Okay. And then let me just browse and get in there and go back to where I was. See that, the plus sign? I can expand it to see my subfolders. Why would you have subfolders? Well, maybe you've got images for different things you're selling or for different affiliates or for different cities. You know, whatever it is that makes sense to you. If you're doing city like Seattle, you need Seattle imagery and then Miami, Florida, totally different imagery, right? And then Phoenix, Arizona, wow, totally different imagery, right? Um, if I'm doing my affiliates, it could be the same image in every single folder. I'm just going to copy it. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me try this again. I'm going to click, click. Now what? I'm going to drag those two to some other folder, either the top level here or maybe all the way up to files and let go. Aha, it's going to ask, do I want to copy the images there or completely move them there? You have the choice. Okay, I'll say move. Ah, it's disabled. I've actually got to make a note about that <laughs> uh, to point out to my guys so that they can fix this. CK Finder is really ours for sure. And so there's nothing about a demo for CK Finder. It's ours. I mean, it's our thing that causes that, but that's from old days. So I shall copy that <laughs> and make that note. Uh, anyway, like everything else, you're going to find that that'll fix itself. Let me see real quick if I can uh, move them just outright, you know, uh, move. No, uh, copy. I forgot which one I was trying to do. Aha, they're both down for the count. Okay, they'll check them. I did get the note in. <laughs> All right, so anyway, what could I do? I could just also upload here, right? That kind of thing. Uh, get my, oh, it didn't move that one or no? I don't know. Anyway, 
what do I want to say? Oh, I moved them, actually. It just gave me the wrong uh, information about it. All right, so maybe. <laughs> They'll fix it. Uh, anyway, what do I want to say now? So, yeah, getting images up is easy. Resizing is easy. We did that. Um, don't resize images larger unless it's just a tiny bit larger because very often images will get very fuzzy, that kind of thing. Um, you can download. You can even select a bunch of images. I could like uh, shift select all of these and say download as a zip and it'll give it to me as a zip file. And that's a backup of all the images in that folder. Or I could just download the folder as a zip, right? Then that way I've got that backed up, okay? So as you go creating stuff, you can back it up and do what you want with it. And yeah, you could create a new subfolder inside the folder, like so, <laughs> and, and call it something like, it could be images of all kinds. It could be header images, service images, about images. It could be um, sidebar, it could be like a credit card accepted or, or call now images, call dash now maybe. And there you go. Does that make sense? So then, yeah, I mean, you could also take one of your images and stick it up in there. Move. Uh-huh. That will be fixed, but I think you'll get the idea. Okay, that one's empty. Anyway, now you see what's going on. And if you need to, you can just delete. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, as you play with it, you're going to realize that this thing's just very cool, very simple. It interacts with the website and interacts with us. So if I want to have an image in here uh, on the website, wherever it is, I'll just like double click in the box and this will open up. I'll go find the image I want and I'll double click that image and there you go. The path is right there. Whoops, I, I got to be careful when I click it again because that reactivates it. The path is whatever I want. It only needed a single click, <laughs> but then, yep. One click, I highlight, but double click, boom, there it is, right? Now, what I need to do is, is when I get through here, of course, I need to save my changes. So let's go a little further and see what else is here. Favicon icon goes up in the corner. Website logo goes physically on the page. That's the logo image here. That's the idea. And then uh, replace the global variables. I have to double check what this is for. I think it's our masking method. Uh, and you're not gonna need to use this anytime soon. Masking is when you say, whenever um, variables show up from uh, my variable sheet, I don't wanna use those. I wanna use this one static thing right here. And so anytime the variable would be used, it won't, it'll use your static thing. So that's if you wanna make all your pages suddenly point to the same phone number or if you want the email address to always be the same, or something else, like you had a website with a lot of options that were in your variable sheet. And so now you wanna just have all of those variables point at one thing. Okay, meta tags. For those of you who understand um, the importance of this, very often in a website, you're gonna to wanna to put things into the header and into the body, right? So if I right click and I view page source and I'm gonna line wrap, I know it's really hard to read this <laughs> and this part right here, I'm gonna look into as well because it shouldn't be there. <laughs> okay, I just made that note. So you're gonna come back into your websites later and it's just gonna be gone. <laughs> That's the cool thing is we can deal with all the stuff on all the websites remotely anytime so no problem find an error send our way we'll fix it for you and everyone else that has the error all right having said that what do i want to say um inside your header you've got your doc type html and it opens with something called the head and in the head is all the stuff that has to do with the header section of the web page until the end of the head which is where the head closes control f <laughs> There it is. It closes way down here. <laughs> and then this is something else. This is called header, and it's just a totally different thing. But the end of the head section of the website. Now, sometimes you want to put extra codes up in here. You have reason for that. So if you were told, put the code into the head section of the website or the header of the website, that's kind of what they mean. So that would be meta tags. Why? 
we just called it meta tags because uh, all the meta tags are in the header section. You could even invent your own meta tags to keep track of things. Um, we invent meta tags. We have meta tags for um, the city. We have meta tag, like a meta tag for the city, a meta tag for the state, a meta tag for the purpose of the page. So there are all kinds of things you can do when you, when you feel like it, you know, when you get a little complex with things like that. And especially if you learn how to use variables from the Excel file, uh, because then you can have columns with variables. And when you produce pages, it'll cycle through those things as it goes through the pages. That's neat because your pages can change cities, phone numbers, companies, addresses, states, uh, whatever else. It can change product IDs. It can change affiliates, hop links. It can change what the meta tags are saying. All that kind of thing is variable. Everything is variable in the web pages. Okay. Well, that's universal code. This code affects every single page you ever make. So any kind of code that needs to go in the header of all your web pages goes here. Okay. And this, of course, is the body code. It's the code that you would put in right before the end body tag, sometimes people say. Right. And so your code would go here somewhere. And really what it means, because it's often put the other way, it's uh, somewhere in between body and end body. So the reason you're often told right before the end body tag is just so you can find it again. The body section of a web page is very, very long. And so just so you can find the code you added, normally you would like add it right in the beginning inside the body or right at the end before the body closes, usually at the end before the body closes. <laughs> so again, code that you put in here, you can put a bunch of things in here. You can put different codes for different purposes from different programs. So if you've got like a live chat and a Calendly, if, if you have your own sorts of chat features and things and they have to put code in the headers, you can put them all in there and it'll be for all of your web pages. And then you can put uh, any kind of body code in here for like visitor tracking code and other things you can go in here for a bunch of things. <clears throat> and that'll affect all your pages. As you know, when you add the codes, just don't stick the code inside another code somewhere in the middle. <laughs> um, don't break up your codes. But exactly, you can have a code that you can put a line break, have another code, put another line break, whatever. You can put some spacing in there so you can visually keep track. Not a problem. And this, by the way, this is just decoration. And, you know, it doesn't matter if you move them up and down. That doesn't have, uh, doesn't matter at all. Now down here, we've got our closing copyright text. It, it's what you find at the very, very, very bottom of the website down here. Copyright, copyright symbol, Samamish would be my city maybe. Acid stain is like the name of the company or <laughs> the keyword. And here's our, you know, years range, all rights reserved. Click here to view the sitemap or the sitemap link. How's that work? Well, it just says copy and then the copy symbol. And then it's got some codes for the city and the keyword and the year and all rights reserved. Now, in the beginning, you're not using tokens like this. So just make it your thing. You know, copyright C, ag, me, <laughs> or, or whatever. Dave does concrete, right? And then make it uh, the appropriate years, you know? or whatever kind of years you want. And no one really cares about the past, it's up to you. All rights reserved. Click here to view the sitemap, and then the sitemap is a link. How do you get links to happen? Well, there are two ways. One of them, you put the word, and that's what we did. We said, click here to view the sitemap. We put a pipe and then we put sitemap, right? It could be that this is the entire link. So I'll do that. So up in this WYSIWYG editor somewhere, is gonna be something that looks like a link symbol, a chain link, right, link. So if I click that guy, it brings it up. It shows me what I highlighted. Click here to view the sitemap. It says, what kind of a link do you wanna put there? Is it a link to an anchor somewhere on the page? Is it an email? Is it a phone number? No, no, it's a URL, okay. What's the protocol, HTTP or HTTPS or FTP or news or other? Well, it's gonna be a page on the same site. So it will not need to start with HTTPS. I don't have to write the whole URL. So I'll just do other. And what's that other gonna be? 
sitemap.html for the sitemap. Make sense? The, another way to do this, sometimes when you do that, it doesn't work and it's a broken link and you think, what do I need to do? Put a slash right before it, okay? Sometimes if you put the slash, it'll do a double slash and break the link. <laughs> other times you'll do the slash, uh, you, you didn't do the slash, needed to do the slash. Uh, in this case, a way for me to check is to double click the other link to bring it up and see how they did it. They did it other with a slash sitemap.html, right? So I'll double click mine again, other, and then I'll put the slash just for consistency. Okay. It worked before, so that'll work now. And I can go ahead and get rid of that, huh? I don't even need that anymore. Okay. Now, a couple other points I want to make real quick. There is an image icon in the WYSIWYG that has to do with that CK editor. That is your connection to the CK editor inside a lot of boxes. Okay, so this will make it easy for you to find images for yourself. Um, it may just go into a certain folder. Let's double check. You would browse the server or you would just upload here. You would do all your stuff here, right? Let's browse the server. Okay, and that's what it is. It goes to the images. So you don't see the files folder here, do you? No, images. And then all the stuff you put inside of there. So anything that you want to work in little places like this, if you can't find it and you're thinking, where the heck is it? Then just pay attention to where it went. Like in this case, the images without the bigger section of the files, okay? It went to the images because it's an image icon. It's meant for images. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna cancel. Now, one more thing I wanna point out about the link, if you double click. <clears throat> Sometimes, and some of you guys know this, you can set the target for a link. So we put the text, the kind, and the URL, and you can put the target. That means does it, when I click it, does it just change the page and go there? Or does it maybe open the page in a new tab? I might want it to open in a new tab. That commonly is this underscore blank. Underscore blank kind of means a new blank page or a uh, go over here and create a blank tab and then put the link there. Okay, okay. So that's how you can get a page to open separately without losing the first page. Okay, canonical URLs. Um, should they include the www dot or not? I usually say no. You could say yes. I never know why. I can't even tell you which is better. It doesn't really matter. It's just consistency. So I like to say no, because it's more for people to read when they're looking at a URL and they have to kind of like erase it in their mind's eye in order to remember the rest of the URL. So I just don't like to show it in the first place. Can the crawl, and, and for canonical URLs, that's how Google displays the, your URLs on Google for people to click on. So do you want them to see the www dot? I normally don't, okay. Can crawler index? This is pretty important. This right here means, is Google allowed to put my pages on Google? And MSN, are you allowed to? Yahoo, are you allowed to? DuckDuckGo, are you allowed to put my pages on Google? Okay, so if you say no, you're saying, guys, don't put my pages on Google. I'm not done with my website. It's not ready. It's not got the right stuff on it. Usually you set it to no when you're doing all the kind of work that we're doing now because you're going to change everything, right? This will take you a little while. You're going to change everything, maybe, right? So if you're gonna and you're going to try to find some new images and come up with all this stuff, you might be a few days. You just might, putting together your vision. So you don't want Google to accidentally start showing all this stuff about your website. Then we have to untrain Google on it or retrain it on new content. But you know what most people forget to do? <laughs> they get all their content done, they put the website out, they submit the sitemaps and they wait and no one ever comes. They don't know why. And finally they realize when they come back in that they had this thing set to no and they forgot to flip it back to yes, okay? Jot down a note on a post-it or something and stick it on your desk going, can crawler index? Yes, you know, or just type yes, something to remind yourself. Okay, project type, SDST to H. That's advanced, don't worry about it, just leave it on T to H. Backup and export, 
you're not doing anything with that, so don't worry about that either, okay? And you can update the general settings. Now, one way to tell quickly if, you're, if crawler can index is this. Matter of fact, I'll refresh it so I can show you, okay? If I do a search in the source code for no index, <laughs> Crawler cannot index, no index, but all one word. I'm gonna see it here as a meta robots no index tag, okay? So I need to know that. <laughs> this means do not index this page, and if it's set there in the general settings, that affects every single page of your website. So let me flip it to yes and update it. Come back here again. Refresh, control F. Let's try no index again, and it's not there at all, right? Perfect. So that is how you can tell if your pages are being blocked from showing up on Google, Bing, Yahoo, and so on. Okay, so I updated my general settings. I've, I've gone through all the stuff you need to care about on this particular page. So I'm going to call it quits with this recording. Then we'll move into the next one. Theme settings and typography. And that's a blast. These two here have everything to do with you personalizing your template. So this is really cool. All right.